Just lift your hands and voice declare Mother mighty You are the great Hallelujah How many of you believe that the God we serve is the mighty God It's not just the mighty God. He is the almighty. He is the almighty. Power belongs to him. He is power personified. And therefore there is nothing that power can achieve. That he cannot do. And right where you stand. The power of God will ensure that before you leave this service. Your life is completely transformed well enough for you to become your expectations in other words your expectations will be turned to instant manifestations let me hear your amen louder hallelujah by the way i welcome us to may miracle service amen and i want to assure you every one of us here on ground and those that are following online that this service is going to be unique this service is going to be peculiar to your own life God will touch you and meet you at the point of your expectation all I want you to do is have faith tonight to believe God for the impossible have faith to believe God that this is your service that's why you came you didn't come to watch others get their miracle. You came because you want an encounter with the King of Kings. And he will meet you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amos chapter 5. I'm just going to pray a little bit before we sit down. Amos chapter 5 verse 19. We're just going to pray before we sit down. We're going to spend some time to pray today all through the course of this service and then also trust God to minister to everyone that came here tonight. Whatever your condition is, whatever you are trusting God for, I want to fully assure you that this is the night for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's not going to be like every other service where you come and just go without receiving a touch. This night, God will touch you and change your life in ways that will shock and dumbfound you. In fact, you won't know who is more surprised. Whether you, who God changed, or the people who saw you before you came for this service. Did you hear what I said? God will not only visit you, he will surprise you. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for the testimonies that we have heard over and over in this place. And I just believe that those testimonies are in a way a prophecy to someone that came here expecting the touch of the mighty God. That everything that you have heard you will see in your life. You will see it come to pass. Some of you heard the testimonies and coveted someone's testimony. It will become yours after tonight. You know in Job chapter 42 verse 5 he say, I have heard of you with the hearing of the ear. But now my eyes see you. In other words, you can hear from other people what God has done for them. But there's such a thing as you seeing firsthand the workings of God in your life. And then know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, the same today, and forever. If you believe it, shout a big amen. amen. So are we ready to pray before we sit down? Tonight we are going to confront a lot of things. And God is going to visit families represented, visit individuals. The spirit of prophecy is already in this place. And I trust God that in the short time that we have, every one of us will encounter the raw manifestation of the power of God. Listen, if it was not here, we would have told you. 
There's no need putting up a miracle service if it's not available. And those of you that have been here again and again in every miracle service, you have seen with your own eyes. Am I right? You have seen with your own eyes different kinds of miracles that God has done. I want to assure you that what you have seen is not compared to what you are about to see. I can't hear you. In the name of Jesus. So can we pray briefly before we sit down? Amos 5, 19. It will be as though a man fled from a lion. Look at this scripture because you are about to pray and bring an end to certain things in your life. You hear what I'm saying? He said, it will be as though a man fled. Please help me sound. I think it's too loud. It will be as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him. Or as though he went into the house, leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent beat him. What kind of condition is this? You run away from the lion as though you are safe. And then while running away from the lion, a bear meets you. Now you have escaped the bear narrowly. You entered the house thinking you will find refuge in the house and in the house a snake beat you. If it was, a, if, you know, if it was purely a deliverance service, we would have gone into exposing this scripture. Because sometimes that serpent biting in the house, you know the house is where you are supposed to find family. It's supposed to be where you find comfort. So there are people, there are a lot of believers who what they are going through right now is sponsored by adversity that is within them around them jesus said in matthew chapter 10 that a man's enemies are those of his household but i don't i'm not going into that today but i want you to pray because listen do you know that as you pray your prayer is the first expression of your faith as you pray it is through your prayer that god begins the process of changing and transforming your life in such a way that what he has not planted is uprooted. He said he fled from a lion and a bear met him. He fled from a bear into the house and a serpent met him and beat him there. We are going to pray and say enough is enough to every cycle of trouble to trouble. Did you hear what I said? I called it from trouble to trouble. You think God has delivered you from one, you fall into another one. Somebody fell sick. You went to the hospital. Finally, the person is fine. You discover you are in debt. And then trying to pay the debt, somebody dies in the village. And the burial expense is on you. That is what I call progressive cycle of troubles. I don't mean to insult you, but there are some of us here looking at me. That's what your life is. That's what you are going through. From one, It's like the more you pray, the more nothing is happening at all. If you can pray passionately this night, that cycle will be broken forever. No, I didn't hear your voice. I said, every cycle of progressive trouble will be broken in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and say after me, Heavenly Father. Say it again, Heavenly Father. I declare that every demonic cycle of trouble, to trouble of trouble to trouble in my life, in my life expires, tonight expires tonight in the name of Jesus. Name of now open your mouth and roar in prayers. Somebody is praying. Pneumatic, lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Every cycle of trouble after trouble progressive cycles of trouble in my life in my family before now it is broken by the power in the name of jesus somebody's praying somebody's confronting that satanic program that demonic manifestation around your life enough is enough you don't look around you when you are praying don't care about what your neighbor is saying or doing Lift your voice and confront it. Lift your voice and confront it. Lift your voice and confront it. Shapa ragata bala rakati. Epereketebu roko supra atakaba ragata. 
Rihi Suparagada La Hasi Prada Sheperokoska Parada I insist tonight that cycle is over that cycle is over that cycle is over that cycle is over Sharabara Kataba Ladea Suta there is nothing, nothing my God cannot do. All things are possible in Jesus' name. There is nothing, nothing my God cannot do. All things are possible in Jesus' name. There is nothing, nothing my God cannot do. All things are possible in Jesus' name. There is nothing, nothing my God cannot do. All things are possible in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, it comes to an end now. In Jesus' name. Can we pray some more? Don't worry, something is already happening in your life. Right now, as you pray, angels are already being released. The power of God is here. And every chain of oppression after oppression, trouble after trouble, hear me, I'm prophesying to your life, it comes to an end this night. That chain of trouble is broken forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 8 verse 1. Another prayer. Genesis chapter 8 verse 1. Genesis chapter 8 verse 1. You are going to ask that the wind of change from the Lord will blow upon your life. <laughs> Let me explain what I mean. In English language there is a phrase such as the wind of change. In other words, it speaks of a ton of events that things around your life will automatically change. Are you hearing me? That events will so change that your night will turn into morning at once. That's what you are going to command to happen. Just help them, please. The power of God is already here. He said, then God remembered Noah. Listen, look at this. Then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters subsided in other words the waters covered the earth and as long as that situation continued there was no way Noah and his family and the animals would come out so they would remain perpetually indoors because the waters covered the earth but the Bible says God sent a wind and because of that wind blowing on the earth, every water was subsided. All of a sudden, the waters dried up. The water speaks of adversity. When that wind of the Holy Ghost blows upon your life tonight, every form of adversity will fall flat forever. I can't hear you. It's like you didn't come for you. Are you ready to pray? Do you understand the scripture? Please pray take these prayers very serious i know what i'm leading you to pray some of you by these prayers alone there are instant testimonies already in your life are you hearing what i'm saying my god the power of god is here it's so strong in this place lift your voice and say in the name of jesus heavenly father Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, let your wind of change, wind of change blow, upon my life. blow upon my life. 
in this service in the name of Jesus Heavenly Father let your wind of change blow upon my life in this service in the name of Jesus open your mouth and turn it to prayer somebody is praying insist that the wind of change the wind of the Holy Ghost will blow upon your life the wind of heaven the wind from the Lord the wind of prophecy the wind of change the wind of power the wind of power Somebody spray. Let your wind of change blow upon my life. Let there be a turn of events, a turn of situations in my life in this service. It must change tonight. It must change tonight. It must change tonight. Are you praying? Somebody lift your voice. Let your wind of change. 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 Would you blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind? Spirit of victory, cover us with your wind. Would you blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind? Spirit of victory, cover us with your wind. In the name of Jesus Christ, just lift your hands. I'm already prophesying over your life now. I want you to be open to receive. The Bible says in Ezekiel 37 verse 9, it says, Son of man, prophesy to the wind. Say to the four winds of the earth and call forth breath to breathe upon these ones. I speak to the four winds of the earth, the north, the south, the east, and the west. And I call forth the wind of the Lord to blow upon your life tonight and bring an end to every battle. Bring an end to every contention. Bring an end to every pain. Bring an end to every attack. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Every time the word wild wind is used in scripture, most often it is used to connote judgment. When wild wind blows, it sweeps everything around it. I call for the wild wind of God upon your life to blow off every satanic emissary, every agent of darkness around your life, spirit of human that is a perpetrator or a sponsor of satanic program. Let the wind of the Lord blow them out of your life. 
Let the wind of the Lord blow them out of your life. In the name of Jesus. I'm still prophesying over your life. Ezekiel 33 verse 11. Two prophecies from that scripture before you sit down. The spirit of prophecy is in this place. I'm telling you. Change is already happening in somebody's life. Listen to this. Deuteronomy 33 verse 11 please. Deuteronomy 33 verse 11. Two prophecies. The Lord is showing me a vision right now. I'm seeing the angels of the Lord going into somebody's house right now. And I see them uprooting things from the ground. And whoever, whichever family is represented here today, I command the power of God to rest upon that individual. And everything that God has not planted be uprooted now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, be uprooted up. Arakataya. Be uprooted now. Be uprooted now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight is a strange night. Two prophecies from here before we sit down. It said, Bless his substance, Lord, and accept the works of his hands. Open your hands before you. I know there's a session where I will pray for you, speak over your lives and what you do for a living. But God is just laying it in my heart to do this now. Somebody is ready to receive. As I declare this word, angels are releasing graces upon people. Help that lady there. Angels are releasing graces, anointings. There's going to be a shift in what you do. I declare over the works of your hands and everything that your hands are found to do, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare prosper. I declare prosper. I declare prosper. In the name of Jesus. Second prophecy. My God, somebody needs to receive this one. He say, and strike the lungs of those who rise against him and of those who hate him that they rise not I'm seeing an angel that looks like fire and just the angel is all about him is fire God is, there's a, there's a judgmental anointing now and I'm about to speak Anyone that is under the sound of my voice in this hall outside or online any conspiracy around your life anyone human or spirit that has risen against you I declare divine judgment against them may the angel of the Lord strike them never to come up again in the name of Jesus Listen, it seems you don't understand. Let me say it again. He said, and strike the loins of those who rise against him. It must not be human beings alone. There are spirits. If human beings will fall and die, spirits don't die. When you talk about issues that are connected to ancestry, patterns of bloodline, these are transgenerational spirits. No matter what you do, they, some of them are so stubborn, they will keep rising again to attack. The Bible says, strike them so that they will never rise again. I pray for you in the name of Anyone that is under the sound of my voice, any spirit that has risen against your family, against your finance, against your ministry, against your career, against your life, stubborn spirits from hell, that keep attacking season after season by the sword of the Lord's judgment I declare that they are struck never to rise again I declare they go down forever in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Like fire, like 
Just lift your hands. God is showing me a vision. I want to declare because deliverance is about to happen for some families here. I'm seeing fire resting upon the hands of people, and I see things pulled off their hands like rope and chains tying their hands. I see those things falling apart, I see it melting under the fire of God. Right now, I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Anyone whose hands have been tied in the realm of the spirit how you know is that nothing that you lay your hands to do prospers everything that you lay your hands to do express experiences setbacks experiences retardation i command the fire of god to to consume those chains consume those ropes break those chains now yes help them break those chains now break those limitations now in the name of Jesus. It is melted by the fire of God. He said like wax is melted by the fire. So let those who hate God perish at his presence. I'm saying it again. Anything that has tied your productivity. Anything that has tied your capacity to produce. Anything that has kapara katokas kapara. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, I declare it is destroyed now. It is destroyed now. It is destroyed now. In the name of Jesus. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling I hear the chains falling Break every chain Break every chain Break every chain Break every chain I hope you are not tired to receive. Please don't be offended. You will soon sit down. God is showing me a vision. I thought I was going to do this later. But God is impressing it on me to do it now. I'm seeing people with chains around their legs. And these chains, based on what I'm seeing, represents limitation. It has for some people caused stagnation. They can't move. They are in one place. For some people, they move, but their steps are very slow. God wants me to break those chains and release speed upon your life. Are you ready to receive? Listen to me. The speed that will rest upon some people, and you see, the power of God will come on them. Literally, some of them will, be, will take off from where they are sitting or where they are standing. So ushers, just help to guide. Or if, if there are no ushers around you, please be your neighbor's keeper. Because the power of God will rest on some people and it will, they will take off with such force. Now, in it, what it means in reality what is what God is about to do in your life in the next one month. Between now and the next miracle service, God will so compress five years together. God will compress ten years together. The speed that is coming on your life will cause you to catch up. Please lift your hands. I'm about to pray for you. Father, I declare in the name of Jesus, anyone whose destiny has been tied, anyone that belongs to that vision that you showed me, chains around their legs, I command by the hammer of the Spirit, let those chains be broken now. Ah! Let those chains be broken now. Chains be broken now. Chains be broken now. Help them, please. Chains be broken now. 
in the name of Jesus. Now with your hands lifted, I release upon you by the hand of God, supernatural speed. My God, the anointing is resting on some people right now. Supernatural speed. Supernatural. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Supernatural speed. Accel help, help them. Acceleration by the Spirit. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That yoke of stagnation comes to an end forever. I'm saying it again. I don't care how long it has been. For some of you, five months. For some, two years, three years, five years, ten years. Why is it so difficult to make advancement in that area of your life? I speak as one sent by Jesus Christ. And I declare that the hand of the Lord releases speed over your life. Take that grace for speed now. Take that grace for speed now. In the name of Jesus. From today you will experience divine acceleration. In your ministry. In your work with God. In your business. In your career. From today. I shift you by prophecy 10, ten steps forward. Amen. I shift you 10 steps forward. Amen. The Bible says the hand of the Lord came on Elijah and he outran the chariots of Ahab. I shift you 10 steps forward by prophecy. 10 steps forward. 10 steps forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. I just saw in the spirit right now I saw an appointed appointment later on somebody's hand I saw two men two two young men one is around this place I saw an appointed appointment later on your hand I'm using that to prophesy to anyone here anyone here that is expected in fact let me just pray if listen let me just even pray the miracle service has, has started already can I just pray for that because the Lord told me that I will pray for a set, a, a set of people here. If you know you are trusting God for a job, you don't have any job at the moment. Listen carefully. Please listen. Alright, just put down your hands and listen. If you don't have any job and you are trusting God for a job, please come out. Don't be embarrassed. It's your service. It's your night. While if you are in a job right now, but you are trusting God for a change, you can remain on your seat and lift up your hands all right you don't have to come out if you are already doing something now if you are working somewhere now you have a job but you are trusting god for a change of job you can just remain on your seat lift your two hands i'm about to pray my god there will be fearful testimonies listen listen if god be god what i'm saying some of you that are coming out in three days you had the testimony here I didn't pray for the person. Someone else, by faith, just connected. And instantly, two jobs. Well, there are certain things that are, that are invoked by the hand of God. It, it takes the form, prophet, the force of the power of the Holy Ghost to bring it into your life. You don't have any job and you want to do something. You want to walk. Just be outside. Please, if you already have a job or you are trusting God for a change, you don't need to come out. You can go back. Please. All right, don't just come out anyhow, please. Okay, if you already have a job but you need a change, please go back to your seat and lift your hands. All right, please just obey, obey instructions. All right, faith works best by obedience. But if you don't have any job, you have been unemployed, just come out, or maybe your contract has ended and you are jobless for now. Come out, you're about to be engaged. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping. 
Just lift your hands, those of you in front, stretch your hands towards me as if you are going to receive something. Those of you in the congregation, you are walking somewhere now, but you need a change. Lift your hands, my God, there will be miracle jobs here. I'm telling you, for some of you in three days time from now, I'm telling you, for some seven days, for some 14 days, for some 10 days, but before the next miracle service, there will be a rain of jobs in this place. Please lift your hands. Particularly those of you in front, lift your hands. If you are in front, lift your hands, please. Now, please just help them. There are two people that the hand of God will come on. There is a yoke of stagnation that will be broken just as one. Please, just help them. I'm just saying this is deliverance that God is doing. It's not just no job. It's stagnation. If you have, all your efforts are tied. Just help them, please. The power of God and that yoke is broken now. I break that yoke right now. Help this lady, please. I break that yoke now. I'm about to pray. The God we serve is the God that is able to do exceeding abundantly. Far above all you can ask or think. For some of you in the congregation, it's going to be promotion this month. Not next month. This month. This month. Whether you are due for promotion or not, the God we serve, the Most High, He rules in the affairs of men. The whole system is about to be overturned in your favor. woman yes closing your hand like this yes is this your first time you've been here before can lift your hands just lift your two hands lift your two hands look at me while you were there i just saw an angel of the lord stand by you and putting keys into your hands keys the wisdom look at me ma i'm releasing a grace the wisdom for the next level the wisdom to access the next level take it right now Take that grace now. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All of you in front, lift your hands. Father, I speak by the rod of the prophetic over these ones here. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God, I bring an end to your joblessness. I bring an end to your joblessness. I place upon your life the favor as of Esther chapter 2 verse 15. The Bible says, And the Lord gave a favor to Esther in the eyes of all that set eyes on her. In other words, everyone that set eyes on her, she was favored by them. As you leave this place today, that favor rests upon your life. It rests upon your life. And I release miracle jobs right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you in the congregation or those of you online, you are trusting God for a change in job. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. I declare by the hand of God that you will return back here with your testimonies. Between now and the next miracle service, you will return back with numerous testimonies. Amen. Listen, for some of you in front, you, it will not be one, two, three opportunities. Amen. Offers, they will beg you to come and resume. Amen. That yoke is broken from your life forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now please return back to your seat rejoicing because it is done. Celebrate God for that. worthy to be praised you are worthy to be praised my redeemer you are worthy to
to me you are worthy to me you are worthy Listen, if there is a doctor here, I just I want to pray for somebody. If you are a doctor, you can please come out. But God specifically is showing me somebody. Your sibling. This is like your sibling or your close relative is a medical doctor. I'm seeing a man. The person who is a medical doctor is a man and is your relative. God says it's time for a shift in that person's career. Come quickly. I want to pray for you. Quickly, quickly. Let's just attend to this and then we'll enter other parts. Your sibling is a medical doctor. Specifically, I'm seeing a man, a male. I mean, that means the doctor is a male. But whichever one, you can just call. You see, you know, one thing with prophecy under this kind of atmosphere is, you know, because of time, God needs to attend to several needs at the same time. So God will give one prophetic word that will address several people at once. If we decide to go one after the other, we can be here till tomorrow morning. Are you hearing me? So it's not by mistake. I can give one word and it attends to five, six, ten people at the same time. That's God compressing time to do so much in the lives of people. What a mighty God we serve. All of you here, your sibling is a doctor. Your sibling is a doctor. Lift your hands in the name. Huh? You are the doctor. Lift your hands. Father. No, all of you put on your hand. Let me pray for him. I stretch my ah, I feel an anointing on my right hand. The force of the anointing that will move you to another level. Take that grace now. Take it now. I release it upon you. In the name of Jesus. Step into a higher level of grace and favor. And may your career take a new turn. In the name of Jesus. Now I pray for all of you that are outside. Stretch your hands towards me. And I use you as a way of contact to your sibling. In the name of Jesus Christ. The son of God who is the lifter of men. I declare that because you came to this service. Their story changes forever. I declare they are lifted to the next level. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural breakthrough in their career. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Return to your seat. Come back with a testimony of what God has done. Celebrate God for them. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are God. you see the prophetic has is it has opened up i'm just names are coming to me all at the same time can we just do for a few before we sit down it means there are two sessions tonight i don't know whether you are here or you are online but i hear a name like ngosi ngosi and this is like a close relative like a sister or cousin sister Ngozi I don't know whether you are here or online if you are the one is a sister or a close relative of yours I want to pray for you but if there is none I will just speak generally to those who are following online I just heard that name Ngozi 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 that's what I just heard your sister or cousin sister Ngozi I want to pray. In fact, the person that God is showing me is like, if I'm seeing correctly, is this person is somehow dark in complexion. I want to pray. Ngozi, that's the name. Ngozi. Huh? Oh, let me know, please. Let me know very quickly why they are out. But I will pray generally. His cousin sister. Your cousin sister. Is Ngozi. How about you? 
your dad's elder sister okay but i meant your sister or cousin sister but it's okay stay i'll pray for you yes eh? one cousin one auntie this cousin is the person dark in complexion okay that's the person i'm seeing i want to pray in fact the height of this person is almost like you that's that's the person i saw i want to pray for I wish it was a prophetic service. I would have asked you to take phone and call her. I would describe how she is looking now. All right? God said it's a new season for her. Amen. And not just her. I see the wind of the spirit blowing around her family. God is about to bring a total change and turn around. Around her family. In the name of Jesus. All of you stretch your hands towards me. Father, I use them as a point of contact to that loved one who carries this name. And I speak to that name, Ngozi. I declare that from today, by the rod of prophecy, your story changes forever. We declare that the wind of change will blow around their families. And we declare a new season over their life in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You said this person, you. You said it's your who? Father's sister. Father's elder sister. Your dad's elder sister. Yes, sir. I'm seeing somebody struggling. That's what I'm seeing. Yes, sir. I just see, I saw the person struggling and I saw like a force. I saw the person's hand moving like a force contending. And what I'm seeing is a perpetual stagnation for a long time. Yes, Go and tell her that God has brought an end to her predicament. Yes. Did you hear what I said? Yes, that by the force of prophecy, tell her that I said, in five months, God has given her a different story. Amen. That's what I'm saying. And I use that as a point of contact to anyone here who has struggled for a long time. Either you or your family members. In the name of Jesus, your freedom and your liberty comes tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your story has changed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please be seated. God bless you. Everybody, just be seated briefly. You are worthy to be praised. We lift your name. We lift your name high. We lift your name. 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 Shout hallelujah. Anna with H stand where you are Anna he's with H Anna spelt with H stand God wants me to prophesy favor on your life believe what I'm telling you you will see first hand miracles particularly all these ones that prophecy is locating first hand miracles you will see it Hannah with H in the name of Jesus wherever you are standing I don't even know where they are who is standing because I'm just seeing everybody standing but in the name of Jesus I prophesy that grace of favor that grants uncommon access step into it right now step into it right now the Bible says what I say to one I say to all so even if your name is not Anna you can connect to the prophecy by faith I declare that force of favor rest upon your life now 
in the name of Jesus Christ. There's a lady who is following this meeting now. You, you are into ICT. That's what you do. Because I see you with computer, tech, ICT. You are following this meeting right now. God is about to bless the works of your hands. And I see a very strong financial anointing released upon you. At the same time, I declare, God says he's wiping your tears. You are following the meeting online. And I see you with computers. That's what you do. You are into ICT. In the name of Jesus, the grace of God releases financial explosions around your life. And I declare that every tear that you have shed is wiped out forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know if there is a way they can, people who are online who receive prophecy, I don't know if there is a way they can connect or give us a feedback. Is there a way? How? How do they do it? Huh? Okay. If you are following online through any platform, just send us a chat, alright? Put a comment or something, if it is Facebook or whichever platform, or just send a text to our public relations line, it will be displayed. Or any of our emails, sgnipneumatechpr at gmail.com. Just send, if you receive a prophetic word, and it was your case, and you are online, please do well to just send, you know, a feedback so we can know for confirmation purposes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated quickly. Now, while you are seated, the Lord gave me a strange instruction this afternoon. While you are seated, I want you to quickly take a sheet of paper. Listen carefully. If you can take a sheet of paper, you are going to write down specifically your prayer points, your desires, your expectations, things that you are believing God for. All right? If you don't have paper or writing material, please signal any of our ushers or protocol officers. They can help you. And please do it well enough not to distract the service, okay? While you are doing it, make sure you pay attention. Your word can just come, alright? Don't be distracted by what you are doing. Make sure you are paying full and maximum attention to what I'm saying right now. I'm sorry we didn't announce it last week, but just this afternoon while I was praying, the Lord said they should write down their expectations. Anything you are believing God for. The salvation of a loved one, deliverance of a family member, a release of a particular need, whatever it is you are trusting God for. Even if it has to do specifically with your spiritual life or your ministry, please write it down. Get a neat piece of paper. Write it down. You don't write your name. Don't write your contact. Just write your expectations, okay? We don't need to know who you are. Just write your expectation. We are going to take our time to pray on those requests. And my goodness, God will surprise people today. I said God will surprise people today. In the name of Jesus. In fact, some of you, what you are about to write has already been prophesied. It has been addressed. Just this first session of the service, what you are about to write has already been addressed. So you can write other things. Now, Please be wise in the way you write your expectations, all right? You must not fill up the whole paper. Please, write down those pressing needs, expectations that you are believing God to attend to. In fact, some of you, all you need to do is just write one request. For some of you, it's just one request that God will answer in your life that will answer the others. For instance, somebody wants to write, God, give me a miracle job. And then he also wants to write, God, touch my finances. He also wants to write, God, cancel debt. Can I tell you something? Number one has settled the rest. If God gives you a miracle job, that job is such that it will be well paying enough to take care of all your needs and your debt. So what I'm saying directly is be wise as you write. Look for those ones that are pressing that you know if God addresses on their own they become an answer to the other needs in your life write them down neatly we are going to collect them i will tell you when to collect them all right please ushers don't collect them until i tell you when to 
just write it down and keep it with you when it's time to collect the request i will give a signal to the ushers and then they will do that and we are going to storm them with prayers here there is an angel for the answers of prayers that have been released over your life this season i didn't hear your amen, amen. maybe you thought i was joking i said there is an angel of the lord that i'm seeing that has been released to answer prayers that's what god is showing me right now this is going to be for you a season of answered prayers in the name of jesus christ It is raining all around me. I can't feel it. The latter rain ride on Jesus. We need more rain until we are wet and we are soaked. With a lot of rain I know you are here You are here in this place I know you are here Precious Holy Spirit I know you are here, you are here in this place, I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit. Now this is a prophetic word for someone here. Right now, I see the Lord releasing fire on someone right now. And God says that season of spiritual dryness and that prayer altar of yours that has grown cold is going to be set ablaze by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I'm seeing that grace rest upon at least two people. I'm seeing that grace rest upon at least two people. Right now in the name of Jesus I release the fire of God upon you. That's why you came for this service. That season of spiritual dryness is over. It's over. Receive fresh fire now. Receive fresh fire now. Receive fresh fire now. What a wonderful service tonight. Mark chapter 4, verse 39. Mark chapter 4, verse 39. On behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of his body, the church, and this ministry, I once again welcome you to this miracle service. And I know God is already doing a lot of things in our lives in such a way that you are walking out of this place to return back with your testimony so tonight i want you to be truly expectant all right truly expectant don't just wish that god will touch you be truly expectant let your heart be so open to receive it doesn't matter whatever it is that you need to receive the grace of god is strong and available in this house even if as a minister, as a pastor, you are here to receive a fresh fire, you are here to receive graces that will help push your ministry to the next level, that will help ignite the gift of God in your life, this is the night for you. I want your heart to truly be open. Listen, I don't want you to just stand and watch other people receive their miracles, receive from the Lord, and then you are nonchalant about it. And then when it becomes very serious, like if you see the power of God touching people around you, that's when you are now, you say, oh, so it's working. And then you lift up one hand. No, I don't. that's not what I want. I want your heart to be open. A man that is expectant, there is an action of faith around him. First of all, you pray when you are asked to pray. And then you move by the action of faith. 
if you are asked to lift up your hands and receive you lift up your hands to receive if you are shouting amen you are shouting it with the, from the depths of your being because you know that by that instruction god is bringing to pass his word concerning your life so i want your heart to truly be open the bible says in proverbs 23 verse 18 it says surely there is an end to everything and the expectation of the just shall not be cut short it is according to the point of your expectation that god visits you without any expectation zero visitation you can be so close to the power of god you may even come out when your case is mentioned but without a tangible expectation in your heart expect to receive nothing the bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways you are here and your mind is somewhere else or you are following online and you are distracted why will you believe that this service is not enough for god to visit you and then you came anyway or you are following right now if you came tonight or you are listening or following online you must purely believe that as long as you are under this arena or under this corporate anointing the spirit of god is releasing graces mantles he's releasing his power on every life and that yours will not be an expectation or yours will not be an exception to receive a turnaround a change and a testimony so you must believe you must believe within the week i was reading the book of acts and i read something very peculiar in acts chapter 12 the bible says that they were praying for the release of peter in the house of mary yes they were praying but when peter was released and knocked on their door and they heard he was the one they didn't believe how can you pray without expectation how can you shout amen without expectation how can you be so close to your miracle and then when the miracle surfaces you are not ready to receive it because you didn't believe it will come so everybody man or woman of god whether you, you even an usher wherever you are serving anywhere even if you are with the cameras wherever you are the power of god that is here tonight is available for everybody including me i came with an expectation tonight and my expectation number one is that everybody will live here with a testimony Amen. in the name of jesus christ my god let's try to save on time a little bit mark chapter 4 verse 39 a very brief exhortation and then we'll rise up to pray again we will still minister to the sick and then i will still speak over our lives generally and we are done tonight how many of you are already blessed mark chapter 4 from verse 35 let's begin from verse 35 and then we'll read to the end of the chapter on the same day when evening had come he said to them let us cross over to the other side now when they had left the multitude they took him along in the boat as he was and other little boats were also with him and a great wind storm take note of that and a great wind storm arose take note of the word wind and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling in other words they were about to capsize their boat was about to perish in the storm but he was in the stern asleep on a pillow as usual that jesus always is when he's confronted with trouble and they awoke him and said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and his body said to them why are you so fearful how is it that you have no faith last verse and they feared exceedingly and said to one another who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him please bring the woman that will shout under the anointing right now i'm seeing someone who is light skinned in complexion i just see a spirit that has oppressed you right now the hand of god is upon you and that spirit lets you go in the name of jesus christ by the anointing right now right now we set you free by the power of the anointing in the name of jesus that spirit lets you go now in the name of jesus 
You always fill my heart with songs of the liver and just leave her there. Whenever I am afraid, leave her on the floor. I will trust in you. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of the deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Kalabarakosi brahata mandes. Lord, we thank you for your power in this place. In the strength of the Lord, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. Let me just give you a brief charge before we play. Before we pray. There will still be a session of deliverance. Though. This one I'm just responding to the promptings of the Spirit. This is a very popular story that many of us will know if you are conversant with the Word of God. Mark chapter 4 from verse 35. Jesus had finished the crusade and he was about to move to the other side. And as soon as Jesus spoke to them and said, let us move over to the other side. The Bible said two verses after that, there arose a great wind. The Spirit of God is still moving all across this place right now. I'm telling you, any yoke you came with, you are not going back with it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now just give me your attention. Jesus said, let us go over to the other side. Let us cross over. As soon as Jesus decided it was time to make advancement to the next phase, to the next place, the next location, the Bible says a storm arose. Brothers and sisters, let me let you know that as long as you are living on this earth, for every time you are to make an advancement in life or in destiny, it is not without challenges. There is no progress or advancement made by any man that is not without challenge. Staying in one place is enough. Or possibly even going backwards, which is never the lot of the believer. But the moment you decide to make advancement, you know, even in physics, I think there, there, are, there is a law of motion. Is it the first or the second law that says that a, a body or of the body of an object or an object remains at a place at rest until an external force is added i think there is another law still another law of motion that says there is a law a force when the body begins to make advancement there is a force that the body fights against there is a force that keeps that object perpetually at one spot so for that body to make advancement it must fight against that force so any man or woman in life or in destiny that is at a spot, believe me, under the, under, under the name of the Lord Jesus, there is a force that keeps you perpetually at that place. The moment you decide to advance, it's like all hell breaks loose. For some of you, when you are content, when, when, it, is, when it is advancement, you know, for little, little levels, nothing happens around your life. It's like the devil is not on sight. But the moment it is time to step, make a giant step and enter into a mega size breakthrough, that's when all of a sudden Satan takes notice of you and says, where are you going to? All kinds of attacks just arise. Let us cross over to the other side. Instantly, a great wind storm arose. Remember that in verse 36, the Bible says that Jesus was with other people. It was not just his boat alone. There were other boats with Jesus. And then Jesus, as soon as they began to cross over to the other side, the devil stirred up a, a strong wind. 
and that wind began to force the sea to act against them to act against their favor you know the plan of the devil not only kill jesus but cause all the other people around him to perish as a stain on the gospel and the message that jesus came to preach remember jesus said that i have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly so the bible the, the devil and you know in scripture he says i'm not ashamed of the gospel of jesus that is is the power of god unto salvation so just kill him and everybody around him as a permanent stain on the reputation of the message he came to preach he claimed that he came to give them life and now everybody around him is dying so some attacks what i mean is that some attacks around your life the devil will make sure it extends to people around you either to mock the god that you serve or to make the people around you stop believing the god that you serve do you understand what i'm saying let us cross over and the bible says a great wind and that's what i want to deal with this element called the wind that's what i want to deal with because the lord told me today that there are evil winds blowing around the life and destiny of people and it is time you can help her to sit. it is time to bring an end to those winds a great wind storm a great wind storm a great wind storm as soon as the wind began to blow the waters that were peaceful to allow them cross over the other side all of a sudden the waters became boisterous it became waves against them now every time most times if you read scripture the bible has always signified the word wind wind is one of the elements of the supernatural the bible most times will use the element of wind to communicate the forces or the activities of spirits it either speaks of spiritual activities or the operation or the forces of spirits at work the bible says in john chapter 3 verse 8 it said the wind blows where it lists and you can't tell where it is coming from or where it is going to it says so are those who are led by the spirit so most times that the bible uses the word wind sometimes it signifies the operation of a spirit in the case of john chapter 3 that wind there was to signify the workings of the holy spirit at work in the life of a man who is born again and regenerated but remember brothers and sisters that the holy spirit is not the only spirit in the realm of spirit when we say the realm of the spirit we are saying first of all the realm of spirits the holy ghost is there the spirit of angels are there human spirits are there demonic spirits are there principalities and powers spirits of different kinds and ranking remember jesus told them when they were not able to cast out that demon he said this kind you know what kind means it means species it means gene different spirits of different class and family and anything that moves upon the surface of this earth whether you like it or not you are under the influence of a spirit how do you know the spirit that is at work in your life how do you know the spirit that is at work in a situation at work in a business at work in an organization check the results jesus said by their fruit you shall know them he said for the fruit of the spirit so the results generated around around the life of that individual i beg your pardon around the life of that business that family that organization the physical happenings around are the products of the spiritual forces that influences that being when the spirit of god influences the life of a man because it's the spirit of god that establishes the kingdom of god in a man's life when the spirit of god influences the life of a man the bible says this is what you find in romans 14 verse 17 it says the kingdom of god is not in meat or in drink but in righteousness in other words that man has a right standing and carries the nature of righteousness by that nature he's able to live right he's able to do right he doesn't struggle to live right because that nature subdues the nature of sin it takes the nature of god to live like god 
God said, Be ye holy. First Peter 1 16. He said, Be ye holy, for I, your God, am holy. So it is only when you carry the nature of God that you can produce a lifestyle that is like God's. And that nature is communicated to you by the workings of the Spirit of God inside of you. When the Spirit of God is at work in the life of a man, you see the goodness of God as a living testimony around his life. Even in the midst of obstacles, yet that person can still say that in all these things, we are more than what? Conquerors. But guess when? Guess what happens when it's an evil spirit? The Bible says a great wind, an evil wind, rose up. There are five kinds of winds that we will deal with tonight. Of course, by now you know that the word wind signifies the influence of spirit. Isn't it? Good. And even in the physical, once the wind is blowing, anything that doesn't have substantial weight will be taken off by it. I've seen winds that uproot trees. I've seen winds that remove the roof of houses. Isn't it? Even removing houses. What they call those kind of winds? Tsunami. Right? <clears throat> Excuse me. There are some winds that will blow around your life and destiny and makes you to enjoy the goodness and the mercies of God. Those are the kinds of winds that blow everything that you are believing for into your life. He said, Thou preparest a table before me. It is that wind that will blow all the good things that you need to enjoy on that table. There are also winds that can blow them out. There are winds that can blow around your life and your destiny. Now I'm speaking figuratively of course. There are winds that can blow around your life and destiny and chase away all the helpers. Chase away all those that are supposed to favor you. But this night, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says he rebuked the wind, isn't it? This night we are going to rebuke those winds out of your life. Those evil influences will fall apart forever. The Bible told us, it says that Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea. So the sea was not the problem. They could see the sea. The sea was water. The sea represented the physical events, conditions around the person. The wind was the spiritual influence over those things. Jesus did not face the one he could see. The water was not the problem. It was the wind that caused the water to act against them. The Bible says he rebuked the wind and spoke to the sea. That means that the best way to handle challenges of life is first in the spirit. The Bible says that God gave man dominion. The man that God gave dominion is the man of Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says that God created man in verse 27. Yet we did not see any man. He, and he said he blessed them and said have dominion but in chapter 2 verse 9 the bible says verse 7 rather that the lord god formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life so in chapter 1 god created man in chapter 2 he formed man but the man he gave dominion to was the man that he created in chapter 1 according to his image that is the spiritual man not the physical so dominion is is in the spiritual it's not in the physical when you are tackling issues don't tackle them physically please increase the volume now don't tackle them physically attack things from the realm of the spirit people hate you and conspire against you don't blame them sir it's not the people around you it's what is on your head thou anointed my head with oil what shows it? My cup. So if your cup is empty, there's nothing on your head. Say, Apostle, everybody seems to fight me. I will make good friends today. By tomorrow, they can't stand me. There's something around you. There's an evil wind that needs to be blown off. It doesn't just happen. It's not about how fine your face is. Oh. Young ladies who are trusting God to get married. Let me tell you the truth. These are the last days. Thank God for beauty. A step further, thank God for character. 
and as fringe benefits thank god for other things that you can do but if you think that qualifies you enough to get a husband you are joking no you are joking we are life is spiritual there are forces that can manipulate things either to your favor or to your disfavor i've seen beautiful ones stay without marriage cross thirty and above and i've seen the ones that are not even the slightest beautiful and men are running after them i've seen the ones that stay pure and holy and have kept themselves from their youth yet nobody is looking for their hand nobody has even spoken to them in the last two years then the one that used less than life in the university and just became a believer everybody's running after and including the pastor in us on the school say you don't know me i committed abortion he said i don't care or oh, i'll marry you god will bring the womb brothers and sisters it's not about how they look there is a wind around them is that it is the wind of the spirit of god or there are evil winds blowing how do you explain somebody prayed for And all of a sudden, not even direct contact with the man of God. Somebody just makes a statement connecting to another person. Prays for somebody. And he gets two jobs. The question is, where were those jobs? Where? You think that person was not qualified? He was long qualified. But there was a wind that needed to either blow those jobs into his way. Or blow him to the places of those opportunities. Is either the wind blows to you or blows you into. Are you hearing what I'm saying this night? Because we are going to pray and rebuke some evil winds around some people. He rebuked the wind and spoke to the sea. The first evil wind that we are going to deal with today, you will find that in the book of Job chapter 1 verse 19. Job chapter 1 verse 19. Remember the story. The servant of Job was talking to Job. That a wind came. He said a, a, an evil wind came from the wilderness. Of course if you read your Bible very well. The wilderness has never connoted anything good. The wilderness speaks of dryness. It speaks of reproach. It speaks of stagnation. A wind from the wilderness blew on the house. And the house collapsed on 10 young people with great destinies with great future potentials and they all died not one survived that was an evil wind i don't care wherever i came from that was an evil wind that's what i call the wind of sorrow 10 children all your children die at once those kinds of wind when they blow around your life they they have their the capacity to scatter every good thing at once and you who was praising God yesterday, all of a sudden is a lamentation. Do you know that when you read verses down in that Job chapter 1, the Bible says when Job heard all these things, he tore his clothes and began to weep. He said, naked I came. Imagine that kind of a wind that comes to naked you. It takes away from you every good thing that has been a refuge around your life. It takes away your helpers, takes away your job, takes away your health. Everything just scatters. That's a wind of sorrow. There are people whose lives have been under the oppression of that wind. He said he fled from a lion and a bear met him. He fled from the bear and entered the house and leaned on the wall looking for support and a serpent beat him. That's an evil wind. Wind number two is what I call the wind of terror. Somebody say terror. Job chapter 30 verse 15. Look at this. Job 30 verse 15. A wind of terror. In other words, that wind brings fear. It brings torment. It brings reproach. When a man is tormented, his soul begins to look for death. Depression is one of such torments. He said, terrors are turned upon me. They pursue my honor as the wind. And my prosperity has passed like a cloud. That's a wind of terror. 
pursues your honor turns against you it can turn on a family and everybody in that family is sick it can turn on a family have you seen families where nobody has a job nobody nobody it can break on a family and their finances are tied it doesn't matter what they do see let me tell you can i give you an intelligence this night if you don't go with anything receive this intelligence if you are faced with circumstances that are against you and you have tried everything physical and nothing is working may it be known to you that you are dealing with a spiritual issue no need to pray again if it will not respond to physical solutions it is spiritual and if it is spiritual it means it must be arrested from the realm whence it was generated from The reason why it was a man that had to come and die it was because it was a man that fell if it was an angel that fell an angel probably would have come to die if it was an animal that fell animals were enough sacrifice but it's because it was a man that fell a man needed to pay that price and sacrifice if it is physical physical issues will attend to it but if it is spiritual you have to take the fight up the third wind we will deal with tonight is what I call the wind of division the wind of division Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 the wind of division the wind of division the Bible says that we are not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine in other words it's not just doctrine but it is doctrine that comes to scatter or divide primarily speaking teachings that are of falsehood to bring division in the church but extensively do you know that gossip is also a doctrine <laughs> in a way it's a wind of doctrine sometimes if the devil wants to mess you up he will stir up rumors against you and it keeps going from one person to another until it enters the ears of those who want to help you or those who seem to see you in good light and the devil begins to paint a wrong picture in their mind towards you i know the life story of a lady who went to a man of god in a service while the man of god was prophesying he picked the lady there were issues around her life nobody would get married to her people will come they will even give her money they will take care of her do everything and as soon as it's time for marriage they can even pay all the necessary rights and after that they'll say they're going to do again and then go and the cycle continued like that and prophecy picked this lady true story i was in the meeting thank god for the prophetic and this was what was revealed when she was in secondary school she had a friend that she was close to that friend was wayward but she was a child of god and then much later when the grew finished the university the friend came to know Christ and became serious about her life and quit her bad ways and when men began to approach the friend to get married to the friend this one started telling the, the men what the friend was doing in her past life that's what I call wind of division so as soon as they hear what she did in her past life they will just go the guy can even come with a ring and kneel down on one, on one leg and engage her today and when he hears it this night the next day he's out and when that friend heard it was her friend that was doing it to her she took their picture and went to an altar you tie me i tie you somebody say wind of division some of you that's what we need to deal with this night why is it that every good person around you don't last five relationships no one has gotten married to you what is wrong are you the person with the worst character there is a wind of division around you the wind of division is what sponsors traitors and disloyal people men like absalom that will steal the heart of the men of israel against their father people that satan will plant around your life you think they are good friends but they are wicked and unreasonable people they go behind you to sabotage every good thing that comes to you 
you see an application you want to apply they tell you it is over that they have a friend in that place that has told them it is over and then in the night they go and apply for the position some of you don't know you have those kind of people around you some of you you need to this night you need god will expose every wicked person around your life i'm saying it again any wicked agent of the enemy that the enemy has planted around your life diverting your blessings and your breakthrough they will be exposed tonight Amen. wind of division wicked friends they will only be around you when you have money as soon as you are dried up they run away when you were working they were around spending all your money because you were father christmas now that you are jobless not one of them has done anything for you in the last five months you have been you have been surrounded with arrows can we go on we are going to pray now the fourth wind we'll deal with is what i call the wind of poverty it's a window it's a wind tell your neighbor it's a wind poverty proverbs 25 and my god you would hear something tonight that will blow your mind proverbs 25 verse 23 the wind of poverty some families i believe that the state of their poverty is spiritual in case you don't know poverty is a spirit when we start another series on on financial prosperity this year i will show you poverty is a spirit i'm not talking about temporal lack I'm talking about perpetual lack and not just perpetual lack of resources but even lack of the intelligence and the knowledge to create systems that can bring the resources that's poverty is a spirit is a wind when it is blowing on a family after serving for 30 years somebody collects gratuity in millions and in less than two months they don't know what they did with the millions they are right back to square zero it's a wind it's a wind of poverty that's what blows around your finance the moment you receive salary you don't know how you spent your money it is when the last card is in your hand that's when your brain begins to boot it's a wind there is a wind that has blown everything in your hands physically you have pockets but in the spirit your pockets have holes look at it that's what god told them in malachi he said because you dishonored me and you are not bringing my offerings he said that's why i've made holes in your pocket you gather but it will not stay it's a spirit i remember years ago i was doing counseling and a lady walked into the room and as soon as she walked in the lord opened my eyes in a flash vision I, she was holding her handbag in a flash i saw a monkey hanging on the bag now if you know the monkey very well that is a demon actually but the reason why it, it carries the metaphor of a monkey because you see if you must walk in the realm of visions and revelations you will understand that the figure the, the spirit realm is, is filled with figures of speech all right so many things you will see have significance your ability to understand and interpret what you see is what brings occasions and advantage or a disadvantage of that vision so the wisdom behind that vision is a monkey is a mischievous animal that can steal you try it go and buy a monkey and keep in your house go to work and come back the house will be upside down that means that there was that that was a spirit and you know the bag is where they keep their paws that is the spirit which represents her finance that's the spirit that has attacked her finance as soon as she entered i asked her about her finance she broke on the floor and began to weep the wind of poverty proverbs 25 verse 23 look at this is someone getting blessed already can we go on we are about to pray the power of god will touch people this night he said the north wind brings forth rain no give us king james you will see it better in king james the north wind drive it away that's how he puts it the north wind drive it away rain now rain in the bible always signifies the blessing of god rain is the blessing of god a sign that god has blessed a nation a people is that he sends rain he said it in leviticus 26 and in deuteronomy 28 he said the lord will send you of his good treasure his rain 
Now when a wind comes to drive away the rain cloud so the rain does not fall. Is that not the wind of poverty? Now look at this. Listen to me, those of us in this territory. The Bible says it is the north wind. He didn't say the south wind. The south wind in the Bible represents the wind of abundance. You see that in Psalm 78 and in verse 26. The Bible says he caused the east wind from the heavens to blow, which represents provision. That was how bread fell from heaven and they called it manna. He said, and he also caused the south wind to blow, which represents abundance. That was the wind that blew all the birds. You know, the south that time, according to their geographical location, the south was a desert area close to the Dead Sea. There was a place called the Dead Sea. And you know very well that birds usually come around the sea to catch prey. So the wind from the Lord blew all those birds to the camp of the Israelites. That's why I call it the south wind of abundance. Because the Bible says the birds littered the entire camp. And they had more than enough. The Bible didn't say in these proverbs that it is a south wind. He didn't say it is a, an east wind. He said north wind. Brothers and sisters, what part of Nigeria are we from? The north. What is the poorest part in Nigeria? Sadly, the north. That means that over this region, there are principalities, winds of poverty, station, all the government projects that they try to lobby into the north, yet the people are poorer. If the east of Nigeria has half of the projects, federal government projects that the north has, they would have been ten times better. Am I lying? It's the truth. Whether we have corrupt politicians or not, it's just the truth. No matter how you try to siphon it, somebody is in government, he steals money, steals money, steals money. You heard the one that happened last year. Stole... <laughs> But because of that north wind blowing, he will only leave it for children who will squander it and they go back to zero. So no matter the billions he stole, the wealth is not transgenerational. You know why? Because there is a north wind that drives away rain. Every north wind of poverty around your family, I declare that the end of that wind has come in this service. The north wind driveth away rain. That means if your destiny is tied to the north, one of the forces you must contend with is poverty. You want to do ministry in the north, you have to enter into a kind of covenant with God and break that. He's a prince. I've seen them, I'm telling you. Even in this city, I've seen them. All the five gates of this city, they are on, on the gates. And their motto is, live as you come. So when you come in, the way you came is the way you live. You can never come in rich and live richer. You will live the way you came. I don't have time. I would have shown you some strange things. The north wind of poverty. Finally. Let's stop here. We can talk about the other one another day. Finally, the good news is that under the influence of the anointing, you can prophesy to the winds and they will obey you. Jesus spoke to the winds and they obeyed him. The Bible says, he that is from above is above all. You carry the life of God in you and you are anointed by the Holy Ghost. In Ezekiel 37 verse 9, he says, Son of man, prophesy to the wind. Prophesy to the wind. And say to the wind, you can command the evil winds to go. You can command the right wind to blow around your life. The right wind will blow healing to your life. It will blow restoration to your life. It will blow breakthrough to your life. Are you ready to pray this night? Because those, those evil winds will be dispersed of your life this night. I said they will be dispersed of your life this night. That, that mama holding a walking stick. The one put in black holding a walking stick at the back there yes what is wrong with her i didn't say she should come huh it's for her husband i can't hear you it's for who it's for her husband use, use the mic now what's wrong with him he's 
he's not well. He's not feeling fine. He's not. What's wrong with his legs? He ne- he needs the help of the stick to walk. He can't walk without the stick. Yes, sir. What happened? Let's talk, Daddy. What happened to you? Can he speak, or the wife will explain for him? Diabetes. He has diabetes. Yes, sir. For how long? My God. They can't say how long. Diabetes and hypertension. How long has he been using that stick? For a month now. For a month? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you ready to see a real miracle? Give the stick to Baba. Who is there, please? Give the stick to Baba. Give the stick to him. I want to talk to him. It's time for his healing. Is that his wife? Look at me, ma. Look at me, madam. Madam. Madam, look at me. God says it's time for him to walk. Did he hear? Can they hear English? How's that, sir? Okay. Now tell Baba that God says it's time for him to walk. And he will walk without the stick. Tell him in house, sir. My God, I sense the power of God so strong. Just, just hold on, relax. Tell him to look at me and stand up. Give him the stick. Give him the stick. Tell him to look at me and stand up. Tell him to look at me and stand up. Let him stand up. Help him up. He can't see clearly as well. Okay, he can't see clearly. Yes, sir. Oh my God. Now, put your hand on. Just put somebody. Put madam, the wife. Put your hands on his eye. Let's start with the eyes first. Just two fingers on the eye. Quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cast that blinding spirit. I command it to let him go now. By the power of the anointing, I command his eyes to see now. In the name of Jesus. Remove your hand. Tell him to look at me. Tell him to look at me. Ask if he can see me. Can he see me? He can see you. He can see me now. Hold on. Tell Baba to stand up with his stick. Tell him to stand up with his stick. Tell him God will heal him. He should stand up with his stick. Father, I bring life to your son. Diabetes and every sickness in that body, get out now in the name of Jesus. And I declare right now he will walk without the use of the aid. In Jesus' name. Tell him to lift the stick up. Tell him to lift the stick up. He should hold it from the base. He should hold it from the base. Please help him now. Uh-huh. Baba, look at me. Tell him to walk. Walk. Tell him to walk. Walk. Let him come forward. Tell him to walk without the stick. Tell him to walk. Walk. Guide him towards this place. 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 Tell him to walk without the stick. That's the power of God there. Walk. We declare perfection, perfection, strength to his bones, strength to his bones, in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to pray? Just help him to exercise his legs over there. God has healed him already. Let him just exercise his legs and then he can sit down. Can you, are you ready to pray for two, three minutes? Every evil wind blowing around your life every evil wind blowing around your life all of you here just lift your hands there's somebody that I want to prophesy to there's somebody under an oppression there's a family represented here right now release the power of God and I curse that spirit just help me with the person I need help I need to prophesy to that person are you ready to pray my God there's power oh my God oh my God my God, my God, there's power here. How many wind did I mention to you for? There's a wind of terror. There is a wind of sorrow. There is a wind of poverty. There is a wind of division. In the next two, three minutes, I want you to cry to Ebenezer. Let that evil wind 
live your life and your family forever open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus I can't hear you pray every evil wind Every evil wind Every evil wind Every evil wind Around your life Around your destiny By God the power of God is setting people free now Every evil Rusa prenda fuba, babamba kaba brutos kaba, epa, 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 retos kaba, eka ba 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 ba. In Jesus' name we pray. Now Baba's steps has increased. Has he walked like this before? Since he became sick, has he walked like this before? That means he's healed. Yes, he has never worked like this. Before. Take him to my chair. God will perfect it. Let him sit there. Let him sit there. Help him there. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell it all. He saves me and washed me with his blood. So I can shout hallelujah. I can shout hallelujah. I can shout and praise the Lord. Listen, let's pray. Let's just pray for the sick now. Let's use this miracle to bring healing to anyone that has any bone condition. God who has done this miracle, diabetes, all kinds of sickness, couldn't walk like this without this aid. And now he's walking perfectly to the glory of God. Can we celebrate the Lord Jesus? I want to pray. Listen, God showed me, God showed me somebody She's crying. She's in tears. That's an old woman. This is a real miracle, not stage managed. There are things that money cannot buy. Oh, imagine if you didn't come for this service. God showed me somebody with a problem around your ankle, one of your ankle, close to your ankle, ankle, ankle. Do I need to say it in house so everybody can hear? Close to your ankle. That means close to this part of your leg. Close. I saw you with a problem around your leg. God wants to set you free. This problem is actually a bone problem. Who are you? Come. Celebrate Jesus if you are doing that. See the way she is even walking. You know there is a problem there. You know the way you celebrate miracles. I guess, I guess you may never see... Listen, Mama, where's the problem? Huh? Put the mic on her mouth. Where? It's here. 
this place, your right ankle. How long? Now it's getting to four years. Four years. What happened? Did you have an accident or you yes. just you had an accident? No, I just you fell. Yes. So do you I feel pains fracture. there? You had a fracture. Yes. Before. Did they operate it? Yes. They operated it. Mm. Do you feel pains there now? Naturally, do you feel pains there? Sometimes. You feel pains sometimes? Yes. And you can't walk properly? Yes. Do you believe that God will heal your bones right yes. now? Yes. Yes. I believe. Now? Yes. And you will run, not even walk? Yes. Mama, look at me. You believe in the power of Jesus? Yes. Say after me, Jesus. Jesus. Touch me. Touch me. Heal my legs. Heal my leg. Make me whole. Make me whole. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I speak healing to her legs. I command the bones to be straightened out. Anything that is missing is restored right now by the power of God. Help her, please. Help her. By the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Instant perfection. In Jesus' name. Mama, look at me. Look at me. Face that place. Just do what I ask you to do. Run. 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 Somebody give Jesus a big shout of praise. <laughs> Mama, look at me. How do you feel there? How do you feel? How do you feel? Could you do this before? No. At all? Yes. So this is the first time. I serve a God who is powerful. Hallelujah. This God is a good God. You can call him a miracle. I serve a God who is powerful. God who is mighty. This God is a good God. You can call him a miracle. Mama, come. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. Just hold my hand. Father, perfected in the name of Jesus. And we release you from this season of struggle into a place of abundance and greatness. In the name of Jesus. Help her back to her seat. Let's pray for the sick. Let's just pray for the sick now. Don't worry. We are coming back to address the issue of the wind, okay? Spirits will go. They can hear my voice. The Bible says, strangers shall hear my voice and obey. I'm about to tell them to leave now. You know, one of the greatest gifts that God has given to us is the gift of the authority of sonship. Are you hearing me? This is not about being a minister. It's about being a son. But as many as received into them, he gave power to become the sons. It, it makes you exercise authority as though Jesus is there. If you are sick, please place your right hand where the condition is. God is about to do real miracles of healing right now. Place your right hand where the condition is. Breast lumps will go this night. I mean, we will take the testimony here. Breast lumps will go now. If you can't make contact with the part of your body that is sick for any reason whatsoever, just put your right hand on your chest. Put your right hand on your chest. There's somebody the power of God is on right now. You it's like you vomit. You feel like vomiting. God is uprooting evil substances from your spirit. Deliverance is already happening right now. See, I've not prayed, though. I've not prayed. If you are standing in for somebody that is not here, don't call them. Just stand in for them. Put their name on your mind. Standing for them. After the prayers, go and call them. 
Even if they are sleeping, God is healing them right now. Are we ready so we can pray now? Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. And at the name Jesus, every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven, of things on the earth, and of things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I want you to agree with me by shouting a loud Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every devil of infirmity, every devil of sickness, every devil of affliction, on the count of seven, I arrest you and I command you to leave God's people alone. Out of their bodies, out of their lives, on the count of seven. In the name of Jesus Christ. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, go, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1, and he called the twelve to himself. And gave them power over unclean spirit. Any sickness that is caused by any devil of infirmity. Whether they are recurring sicknesses. Terminal diseases. Any kind of affliction. I bind that devil with chains and fetters of iron. And I command you out of their lives now. In the name of Jesus. And he gave them power over every sickness and every disease i speak to every sickness right now in the name of jesus be healed be healed be healed be healed blood conditions be healed now blood conditions of any type be healed now genotypes ss sc be changed to AA now in the name of Jesus Christ this prayer covers those of you on online and those on ground here yeah. headaches of any kind and any condition with your head I declare be terminated right now blinding spirits let them go now and I command every eye condition be healed now ear conditions be healed now blind eyes open now deaf ears be unstopped now dumb tongues open up now in the name of Jesus Christ every respiratory condition I declare the healing power of God on you now asthma be healed now any condition with your lungs be healed now i'm hearing a name sinusis i don't know if that's a disease sinusis i don't know if that's a disease i don't know what it is but i just heard it sinusis i declare be healed now in the name of jesus i speak to kidney conditions whether here or online or you are standing for someone I don't care the stage of that kidney condition. In the name of Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead after three days, I declare, be healed now. I speak life to your kidneys now. If both kidneys are failing, I declare brand new kidneys now. In the name of Jesus, liver conditions be healed now. Liver conditions be healed now in the name of Jesus. I speak to every organ in your body, your spleen, your stomach, your liver, your kidneys, your pancreas, your small and large intestines. Every organ in your body, I declare, be healed now in the name of Jesus Christ. You sent your word. And heal my disease. You are the Lord, my 
Father, God is purging blood conditions. God is purging you right now where you stand. Everything that God has not planted in your body is uprooted now. I declare cleansing by the blood. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here or online following that has a medical report, we change that report right now. We reverse that report right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is showing me somebody you went to get, you, you had a test in the laboratory recently. Just about a week or so. You had it. You, you went to test for something in the laboratory. God is healing you of that issue now. If you are here and you are of such, please come. Just about a week, you went to the lab to get tested. If you have the report, bring it. But as you are coming, God has already healed you. So when they come, let, tell them to check themselves, know the condition. If they have the report, let's see it for evidence. In the name of Jesus. Would you just wave your hands for 20 seconds? I didn't say clap, just wave your hands. As you are waving it, God is uprooting infirmity. God is uprooting infirmity. I cause fibroid right now. Any form of growth dies now. Every unwanted growth to your body dies now. In the name of Jesus. Just wave your hands for 10 more seconds. God is doing a quick work. You are the Lord. My healer. Say you are the Lord, you are the Lord that He led me. You are the Lord, my healer. Oh, you sent your word and healed. Tabarako Sipa, you are. There's somebody here, God is healing your mother. I don't know if your mother is here or she's following online, but she's kind of dark in complexion. The Lord is touching her body right now. She's healed. If she's not here, call her on the phone and confirm. She has just been healed. The angel of the Lord just touched her now. There's somebody with a strange eye condition. And I see the angel of the Lord putting an anointing on your eyes. You are healed right now. Check yourself. It is gone. That infection, that affliction is over. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Who has medical report? This is Mercy Ayuba. What's she the report? The report. She has ulcer, typhoid, and malaria. She just did the test last week. You did the test. Look at me, last my dear. You did the test when? Last week. Last week. Yes. Confirm. Ulcer. Thanks malaria so and typhoid yes, step forward just step this way do you believe in the power of god yeah. just look straight into my eyes god will touch you that devil will let you go now i release the life of god into you in the name of jesus christ help her right now also goes forever typhoid disappears in the name of jesus christ just help her please. The anointing is so strong on her. And you heal my disease. You are the Lord. What is it? My God, the power of God is so strong. 
Would you have been happy with yourself if you have missed this night? We will soon be done. Just 10 more minutes and we are done tonight. Okay? Yes, let me quickly so we can just pray for them. Yes, yes sir. She went to the hospital this last week that just passed. Do you have a report? That she, that she left it at home. Okay. That you left the report at home? Yes. She What's was the diagnosed condition? with kidney stone. Kidney stones? Yes, sir. Can I get a female usher to put, your, put their hands where the kidney is? Position the usher's hand. Because they, they don't know anatomy or medicine. Position the usher's hand there. Because if you put your hand, they'll say, Pastor. Amen. There are two people I see the healing anointing coming on you right now. It's resting like fire. Like heat all over you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just the symbols. And right now, from today, step into an unmeasurable, an immeasurable dimension of the healing grace. You will walk signs and wonders. God will use it to bring healing to people. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing that grace is still resting on two people. Don't, don't touch anything. Just be quiet. I just saw two people. I'm seeing it. I know what I'm saying. See, sometimes you have to know how to touch your symbols, okay? You have to know how to touch it. Just put your hand there. Where the key? Put your two hands. Now, Father, I command every stone to melt now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, be free from that disease in the name of Jesus. Tell her to go to the hospital tomorrow. No stones. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear, can I pray for you? Exactly. Yes, you. Come. God is visiting you and your family. Where do you come from? Huh? From Bill. You come from Bill. Yeah. Do you believe in the power of God? Yes. Look at me very well. God is visiting your family right now and the power of God will rest on you. And I see God dealing with ancestral issues. And, yeah, ancestral issues. And even issues of witchcraft. Stretch your hands towards me. I cast that spirit right now. I come by the blood in the name of Jesus. I separate this family by the power of God. Let those foundational crosses and yokes be broken now in the name of Jesus. And every form of witchcraft in your family, it dies this night in the name of Jesus. Help her. The power of God is on her. It is over forever in the name of Jesus. Okay, let's just pray for, let's do the deliverance prayer now. Lift your hands, everybody. Let's do the deliverance prayer now. You see, don't mind me. I'm doing, I'm speeding because of the anointing. All right. Everybody, please stand. Just lift your hands. Let's confront spirits that will not allow you make progress. Spirits that will not allow you make advancement. Spirits that have tied families. Destiny is here. Spirits that have kept ministries under lock and key. It is time for you to let them go. I come by the name that is above every other name. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Every spirit of the marine every spirit of the underworld every spirit of ancestry spirit of witchcraft i judge you by the anointing i judge you by the power of the holy ghost and i declare at the count of three let god's people go now at the count of three shout jesus one two three shout jesus let them go now let them go now let them go. I curse you. I help them, my God. My God, help them, help them. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Go by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every ancient chain of darkness that has held any destiny down Chains that have held families, held individuals by the fire of Kaparagataya, by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let those chains be broken now. Let those chains be broken now. 
from the left to the right be broken now be broken now wait there are two people that will shout very loud it's a strange kind of deliverance one is here the other one is here there are two of you spirits from your roots your foundations what i'm seeing now i come by the blood as i'm speaking the power of god will find them you just be calm the power of god will find them there are two of them a loud shout every covenant every transaction that was done i don't care how long ago i visit the foundations of your family i break those covenants now i break those transactions now my god is resting on them i break them now i cause those spirits and i separate you i separate you i separate your family from those spirits now in the name of jesus i have them that's it all of you here lift your hands i've seen two people you don't need to be embarrassed okay this is a spirit that has enslaved family this family generation after generation in fact for one of you is a strange spiritual poverty but right now that devil lets you go and let your family father let your hand find those two people on this road right now i break those chains now i cast those spirits let that yoke be destroyed now find them if you find them bring them for me in the name of jesus and i declare be free now be free now just get them there are two there are two of them here bring them for me in fact there's going to be a shout now i just heard it there are two it are ah, that fire rests upon you now total separation total separation total separation total separation i break those chains i break those chains i break those chains i break those chains on the count of three you must let them go one two three that's it bring them let them go you can't hide spirit of the sovereign god come and make your presence known reveal the glory of the that lady tiny her tie yes close to you are her, um, her has yes exactly my dear look at me can i pray for you come come god has remembered your family after this i'll just speak over our lives jen i can't go specific there's no time please if at those ones with this condition they can go and pray for them let's know who is here all those people under the anointing bring them out i want to curse those spirits there are covenants that will break god is asking me to pray this prayer again and let the anointing of god rest upon anyone that is responsible you don't need to be embarrassed but it's time for your freedom every covenant with marine spirits marine spirits i speak to those spirits right now i appear in your dream life and i curse those spirits by the fire of the holy ghost i curse those spirits and i declare a total separation my god bring them out i declare a total separation every covenant with marine spirit it breaks now it breaks now it breaks now bring them out bring them out i am saying it again i appear in your dream life and i arrest that spirit now and by the sword of of the spirit i declare a total separation a total separate a total separation and i declare that spirit has no more power over you 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Ay, 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 Ebenezer, Ebenezer, ay, 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 Ebenezer, my Ebenezer, ay, 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 Ebenezer. I'm still praying again. And please, if anybody comes under the anointing through these prayers, bring them out. I'm seeing something in the spirit and God is asking me to address it. Two things at once. I'm addressing delay and retrogression. Delay and retrogression. Father, back up this declaration right now by the, by the release of your anointing. Any individual or any family represented here experiencing delay and retrogression. It is not your will that anyone marks time in one place or at most even be retro, even be taken aback. Retrogression is never your will. Your word declares that the path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. I cause that yoke of delay. I cause that yoke of retrogression. I cause that yoke of decay. I cause that yoke of retrogression. It comes to an end now. It comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus. Just bring all of them out. Ebenezer, my help has come. Ay, 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 ay. Ebenezer. I'm prophesying to your own life. Ay, 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 ay. Ebenezer, your help. Shh. Let me turn that lady. Let her just face me. Father, I curse that spirit. Let her go. Generational spirit. I break your hold. Right now. Right now. You have no power against them. I present the blood of Jesus. And I declare that your hold over their life comes to an end. And the count of three. Let her go. One. Two. Three. Go. In the name of Jesus. Can you get me water? <laughs> please, this is, I'm just, uh, wait. Um, please, sometimes these are prophetic acts, okay? There's nothing behind it, alright? And I don't do this often, you know that, isn't it? But God is just, no, I'll, you do it, you brought the water. You do it so that they will not say it touched me. Pour the water on her legs. You will see fire now. Just pour the water on her legs foundational battles and yokes are the let that serpentine spirit be cut off be cut off be cut off I can see you I cut you off all right let's just pray for all these ones here father I stand by the authority of the apostleship representing Jesus, the Messiah, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I speak to all these ones that are outside. Every covenant that they have with any spirit that is not of God. I break that covenant. I break those transactions. And I demand today and now they are delivered in the name of them. Look at that. They are delivered now. I stand by the rod of the apostle and the prophet. I break those transactions. I break those yokes now. I curse those spirits. You know my name and my voice. Let them go now.
Now, somebody, please. This is not pride. When I, when you hear me saying, you know my name and my voice. No, 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 no. There are times when you invoke your authority to do certain things. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Right. All right. So when you see me do this, not pride. I'm speaking to the spirit, and they know when you, when you are aware and you are conscious of the authority that you carry. So it's not about me. Remember, I come in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. So when I'm saying, I, you know my name. It's not my name, Jonathan. It's the name under which I come. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. You think it's Jonathan they are, they are crying to? No. It's the name that I represent. Father, we declare deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. Let me speak over your life. We don't have time to take the testimonies for the healing. But please listen to me. If God healed you, or God healed somebody connected to you, please, I beg you in the name of God, don't take the testimony back. Don't go away. Just walk straight to the public relations stand there. Those of you on this row, you can look straight. You see that poster there, public relations. Walk straight there after the service. Nobody should stop you, all right? Nobody should stop you. Walk straight there. Your testimonies will be documented. We will share them next week. If we say we want to take testimonies, we are out of time. And I want us to leave here. Is that okay? But God, there are tremendous healings that has happened. Miracles of every kind. If God has touched you, after the service, just walk straight there, humbly. Let them record your testimonies and put the devil to shame. The healing is yours. The miracle is yours. But the testimony belongs to God. That his name will be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two things finally and we are done. Let me speak over your life. Please lift your hands. Every garment of reproach and shame that the enemy has clothed you or clothed your family unknown to you and it has brought your life into a mess. It has brought you to a point of trial and error. In the name of Jesus, let that garment be destroyed now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, let that garment be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring that lady. She's not free. In the name of Jesus. Where's Elijah? Where is he? What are you doing there? Leave that place, please. Go. Follow them. Take, take that. Escort the lady with her. Go and cast the demon out. Alright? If I see you looking at him, I'll call you. Amen. Quickly, please, just take, go to the other hall, get her free. I'm still praying for you. Lift your hands. Oh, I called you out, my dear. Can I pray for you? First of all, God is breaking delay over your life. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Please, I'm not, I'm not mocking you, okay? Yes. Your story is changing now. Amen. First of all, the, the yoke of delay is broken over your life. Amen. And look at me. I'm seeing God bringing a season of restoration over your family. Amen. All the areas that has been owed your family, as far as the good things of this life is concerned, by the wind of restoration, it is released in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the areas be paid in full. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at me. I hear celebration for marriage in your family. Amen. Did you hear what I said? I hear, do you, wait, the way she's looking, I don't understand. Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes. Have I met you before? No. Do you believe in the prophetic? Between now and January, I hear wedding bells ringing in your family. Amen. You just go and write it down and tell your family that Paul said the Lord, between now and January, wedding bells are ringing in the name of Jesus. And the cloud of disappointment and frustration that has been hanging up. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. I cast that cloud and I command it to be rolled away now. Rolled away now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm speaking over your life. 
He said to appoint unto them that mourn. To give them beauty for ashes. The prophetic does not only live, reveal. It can create. It can appoint the day for your breakthrough and visitation. I pray for you. Every opportunity that has escaped you before now. By the force of prophecy. I bring them into your life again. I reach into your past. And I bring them into your life again. I prayed it before. I'm praying it again. The anointing and the mantle for speed. Receive it right now. The anointing for speed. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. I wish we had time. I could go specifically. There are things I'm seeing. That's why I'm just generalizing the prophecy. Please lift your hands. Are you tired? I'm sorry. You are here to receive this night. Your life will change like night and day. I'm telling you the truth. Like night and day. Just like the difference between night and day cannot be overemphasized or cannot be contested. So your life is changing after tonight. From today, I clothe you with the garment of favor. Favor that gives you access to systems, access to resources, access to opportunities, access to the hearts of men. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Every cycle of failure around your life. You are a good person, but almost everything you do fails. Whether in your academics or in your business, in any aspect of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break that cycle now. I break that cycle now. I break that cycle now. In the name of Jesus. Let the anointing for wealth rest upon you now. I declare that in the month of May, you will experience supernatural financial breakthroughs. Supernatural financial breakthroughs. Supernatural financial breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you in business, lift your hands. There's such a thing as the anointing for exploits. They that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. It is not how skillful or how intelligent. It is not even the, the number of people you know. They that know their God shall be strong. Lift your hands. I release upon you the anointing for exploits. Any business that you are doing, as long as it is legitimate and it is to the benefit of humanity, receive the grace for breakthrough now. Receive the grace for exploits now. In the name of Jesus. Your hands are commanded to prosper. Commanded to prosper. Commanded to prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing me a vision and I must cancel it right now. Anyone that has been marked for death. As I'm praying, I see the, the fire of God released all across this place right now. Anyone that has a sentence on, of death on their life. Whether death by accident. If, first of all, I cancel every plan of accident. Yes, let me just pray that. Any plot of the enemy to cause accident. I cancel it here tonight in the name of Jesus. And now I speak over your lives. Everyone carrying the sentence of death. From today, that reproach is rolled off your life. Let the sentence of death be rolled away now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And preserve those appointed to death. According to the greatness of your power. Psalm 79 verse 11. I declare by your life in the month of May you are preserved. You will still be alive by, by June's miracle service. You will not die. You will live to see the goodness of the Lord. You will live to manifest the glory of the Lord. 
you will live to declare the praises of the Lord to your generation in the name of Jesus Christ I declare according to prophecy your time has come your time has come in the name of Jesus Christ finally I pray for your spiritual life can you just put your right hand on your chest father anyone that is in need of fresh fire right now let that fresh fire come upon them just the strings let the fresh fire come upon them right now revive dead altars revive dead prayer lives activate gifts right now next level anointing in the name of Jesus Christ just pray in the spirit for one minute quietly not loud just quietly just pray in the spirit something has been activated I just told the devil that my name is Jonathan. Come out. Father. Let, moon, let the month of May for you be the month of breakthroughs. Let the month of May be the month of breakthroughs. I speak in the name of him who is called Bal Perazim, the Lord of the breakthroughs. That from this night, you experience breakthroughs in every area of your life. From now till the end of May, step into breakthroughs in the name of Jesus Christ. And I release the peace of God over families represented here. I declare that it is well with you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. While you are all standing, God bless you. Thank you for your time. If you are here and you need to say yes to Jesus, everybody standing and no movement, please. Quickly, if you are here and you need to say yes to Jesus, you want to give your heart to the Lord, I want you to walk forward very quickly. Or you want to rededicate your life. You have seen the power of God. You have heard all that God has done and seen it do you here today. But you want to surrender your life afresh. Wherever you are, be snappy about it. I want you to run from your seat as if you are running out of a burning house. And as they come, I want you to celebrate them. Jesus is calling you. Today is your day of salvation. Say yes to Jesus. Please be gentle. Help them gently. Help them gently, please. If you are here and you want to surrender to Jesus, I want you to come out quickly on the count of seven. Or you want to rededicate your life afresh. This is your night. Let's get you saved and inscripted to the kingdom. At the count of seven, and that is the end. One, two, three. Please celebrate them as they come. Four, forget about who is around you. Drop your reputation aside. Drop anything you are afraid of and say yes to Jesus now. Five, why Jesus is still calling you, please come. While he's still calling you, please come. Six. Seven. All right. Wave your hands and give God praise.